And it seems to be repeating what once again we saw back in the United Kingdom coming here. How much of a concern is it? Well, I think there's a couple of things that are worth keeping in mind. Um, one, we're seeing this surge in Europe, and the U.S. has typically you know, followed what's happening in Europe by a couple of weeks, which would indicate that we may be in for a surge here. Um, that also is happening right as the U.S. has really lifted uh, a number of health restrictions. And um, Dr. Anthony Fauci from the NIH was actually just uh, on another um, uh, news organization's broadcast saying we may see the result of that um, in about a week. And then we're seeing some kind of early, you know, very, very early, and I, I can't emphasize that enough, but indications in some of the reports reported case data and in some of the wastewater monitoring surveillance sites that there might be a little bit of a bump going on. But I think all of that is TBD. And the one thing I'll, I'll say is that every single wave of uh, disease from, from this virus has been a little bit different than ones prior. And, you know, the history can be a useful guide, but certainly not a guarantee. Drew, it's interesting when you talk about waves, though, it seems like at least the willingness from communities, state and local leaders has been to try to learn to deal with it, right? coming into wrapping up two years into year three. How are you thinking about the way that we're treating this? You know, the country is in a very different place than it was a year and a half ago. Um, a large number of people, certainly not all, but a significant number of the population has been vaccinated. Um, a smaller portion have been uh, got, have gotten a booster dose. Um, we also have a lot of recent natural, um, uh, in, I would say, infection-acquired immunity that is probably providing um, a degree of um, layer of immunity on top of uh, vaccination. But so, I think things are in a different place. We're in a little bit warmer weather. That gets people outside. Um, I think from a political standpoint, you also just see a tremendous amount of fatigue uh, yeah. with these restrictions, whether or not they're a good idea or not. I think a lot of politicians and policymakers have kind of given up on attempting to enforce them. Um, they don't, you know, a restriction is, is useful if everybody's doing it or a lot of people are doing it. If nobody's paying attention or following the rules, it starts to become a lot less useful of a public health tool, certainly. Drew, you mentioned earlier that every wave of this virus has certainly had its own unique characteristics. What can you tell us uh, that we've learned about this virus in terms of severity and rate of transmission so far? Well, I think one of the interesting things that has, um, where, where things do seem to be kind of following along um, a certain trajectory is that this does become more and more, at least so far, it has kind of become increasingly transmissible. Um, and, you know, we've always seen a degree of immune escape. So, you know, from a transmission standpoint, it seems to just evolve towards more and more transmissible so far. Maybe that will change if there were another variant. And then again, that's happening, happening against a backdrop kind of of, um, ongoing and increasing exposure to things that create immunity, be they vaccines or prior infection from the virus. So you have those two things kind of competing against each other. Um, I don't think we necessarily know how that might eventually end up. And the big wild card here, obviously, is another uh, variant that we're you know not yet aware of or that hasn't um, evolved yet.